Hello everyone, thank you for attending this lightning session on Confident Canary Deployment uh, to production with Istio. Uh, today I will be sharing a case study or a use case of uh, using the Istio service base at our financial uh, platform, Oyster Financial. So I am Raju Dawardi, uh, Cybersecurity Engineer at Oyster Financial and a Google Developer Expert in uh, Cloud, as well as building uh, the DevOps and the Cloud Native uh, community in Kathmandu. So uh, talking about briefly on uh, Oyster Financial, so we are a Mexico-based uh, fintech startup, which is mostly targeted for the freelancers, uh, startups, uh, and small and medium-sized businesses, so that they will get a banking account and a debit card uh, within a few days. And we recently raised uh, largest seed round in Latin America, uh, and we are distributed in multiple time zones of US, uh, Mexico, uh, Nepal, and India. And uh, we are a mobile uh, first application platform. So starting from the early days, which was uh, late 2018, uh, we started with five services, uh, which have grown up to 80 in, uh, in the span of uh, uh, more of one and a half years uh, with both gRPC and the uh, SCTP services. And from the early days, from the day one, we started adopting HTO uh, service mesh, which said a lot uh, for managing uh, the uh, traffic routes between those applications, keeping us uh, our cluster and the services secure. Uh, communication between them using the MTLS or the egress gateways, the ingress gateways, and also with the integration of the uh, application load balancer of AWS, we gained uh, more security in terms of the uh, firewall as well. So talking about the deployment and the releases, uh, we create a new, we trigger a new build of the Docker image when you create a new uh, Git tag and roll any of those services, whether it be gRPC or the SDB, uh, run inside the Istio service mesh. And there are multiple uh, namespaces for uh, managing each of the tenant of those applications, uh, but they can communicate, but we still keep it secure uh, by using uh, the policies uh, between them and have a very good health checking mechanism for uh, checking the liveness and the readiness props. And uh, there are two cases like for serving the internal users and for the uh, live users uh, for getting us more confident during the release time. And for that, in the early days, uh, we built uh, two uh, stacks of our application the live uh, one for the live users, which is called green, and another one for the internal users, which is uh, called gray. So that means uh, we had two instances of the same service, one for the live users and another for the uh, internal users, the green and the gray. That was not a quite of uh, solving things for us uh, because we had to uh, run two stacks of our application that was not only the resource consuming, but also we felt like uh, we are dealing with the monolith way, and though we are following the microservice architecture, and uh, even by testing in uh, in the gray segment, uh, that didn't give us more confidence for releasing to the live users. So, and also, it felt like we we're using a kind of a staging environment. Uh, like it would have been better if we can uh, plug in any of the new service to the green environment. So for that, we started. Uh, applying the Istio virtual service routing uh, based on headers so that uh, uh, before releasing the app to the green users or, or the live users, then uh, the internal user can test a uh, uh, rest of the version, rest of the green version of the services, but uh, can also use the specific gray version. So in this case, we can see uh, the internal user can test the uh, gray version of the user service along with the green version of the rest of the services. So we can directly plug in uh, any of the test version of our application without uh, impacting the live users. And when we are confident, then uh, we release that. And also further the integration of the uh, third parties or our partners, uh, that used to work mostly with the dev and the staging environment, but uh, but that was not too expected uh, for uh, in that way to run inside the production environment. So we had to deal, uh, do a lot of digging uh, to get the pro proper response from the third parties or the partners. So in that scenario also, uh, by testing the endpoints uh, for the internal users uh, before reaching to the live users, that gave us uh, very much flexibility and uh, confidence in us. 
So for that, uh, we use the Istio routing rule of the virtual service and the destination rule. Uh, the virtual service basically uh, with the mobile app sending the header. Uh, so in this case, the tenant have gray big one. So the header will be sent from the mobile to the API and to all of the uh, services. And based on that, um, the routing will be done with that to be sent to uh, the gray version or the green version. And for the destination rule, uh, we have the two deployment with uh, different label uh, with the instance uh, that will separate, uh, that will be the green or the gray release of the app. So when the internal user uh, do the testing and we're really uh, good to go, we didn't release uh, the version uh, to all of the uh, to all of the live users, but uh, we split the traffic to 30, 70 or uh, 25, 75 percent and we gradually roll out uh, to rest of the users uh, based on the error rates and all of the, and the monitoring metrics as well as our own uh, golden signals of the business metrics. So for that also, the virtual service with the integration or the user combination of the header logic as well as uh, the weightage of the traffic to be splitted and that, uh, that Help us uh, for <clears throat> for not releasing the whole of the stack of the application or the full version of the application to uh, all sets of the users. So during uh, this transformation, we faced few of the challenges uh, because the header has to be uh, sent from the mobile uh, to the API and to rest of all of the services. But in some cases, uh, while doing the gRPC call, uh, in some of the asynchronous calls, uh, some services didn't send the header uh, to the another service and we handled that uh, very nicely. And uh, we started adopting uh, the event-based services. Uh, so let's say if one of the service has to subscribe subscribe to Kafka topic or publish to Kafka topic, then uh, if that has to be rolled out to the gray segment, then um, we started creating two topic for uh, for the one purpose. So one for the green and one for the gray topic so that uh, the gray version of the service will uh, listen or uh, subscribe to the gray topic and another uh, to the green. So also, uh, let's say uh, there was a case like uh, the gray version of the event-based service has to call to uh, the gray or the green version of the another service. So in that case, um, uh, the event-based service uh, inject the header based on the environment variable present in it. Also, uh, so the syncing with the mobile app team because uh, the mobile has to send the header and we need to be in sync uh, with the mobile app development team as well as the backend development and the operations. So for that, uh, we started keeping all of the configuration to uh, the version control so that uh, we all were in a very good sync. And for getting the extra confidence, uh, we. Uh, we made a very good use of uh, Kiali, uh, which is uh, present as an add-on in Istio, uh, as well as Jaeger and uh, Prometheus. Uh, so with the use of Kiali, uh, we are able to scan our Istio configs if they are outdated or uh, if they are not good or if there is any problem in those configurations and also the routing uh, things like uh, which service is calling to which service and what is the uh, latency, what is the uh, all of those uh, traffic handling between those services, though that is for a small duration of the time uh, uh, offered by the Kiali. Uh, and also for uh, keeping traces of our application, we uh, used Jaeger. Uh, and by using the Jaeger of, uh, as a Istio add on, we didn't have to implement uh, those, all of those tracing clients to each of our microservices, which are a very, uh, very good overhead. And so that, that Took us a, uh, that took, took us a lot of engineering resource also, the time and the resource both. So, and for the monitoring uh, part, uh, we built a central monitoring dashboard uh, with the uh, use of Grafana and pulling the Prometheus metric from uh, the cluster itself, but also from the service mesh or from the Istio service mesh. And by setting the uh, uh, by setting uh, the threshold of uh, the uh, of the monitoring, uh, we get a very good alerting things uh, to our on-call system page duty as well as the Slack, so that we will be proactive uh, in terms of the error response or the latencies and uh, those uh, golden metrics of the business logics as well. But uh, while doing uh, these things, uh, there was a lot of YAMLs. Uh, there were the YAML file or the manifest file of the Kubernetes as well as uh, 
uh, the issue routes and all of those things and uh, it is very hard to keep them centralized so we started using helm uh, for managing all of the uh, issue configuration as well as uh, the application the deployment service and all of, all of those things so that we are confident like either all of those uh, configs are applied or none of those are there and also development team started taking uh, the ownership of adding uh, the environment variable or tweaking a few of those configuration inside the helm so uh, that took us a very good path uh, to our uh, devops model so that all obviously centralized all of the uh, resource control uh, for the kubernetes part or uh, for handling the resources of the kubernetes so by the use of istio we are uh, really fast enough for solving our business requirement and uh, getting it done at a very sp a small span of time and without impacting uh, a lot of customer at once. So uh, that is a very cheering point for us. So uh, that's it for now. Okay, bye-bye.